Well, welcome back. We're in Orlando. How many people have been to Orlando? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through that again. Well, we have a very, uh, a very, very good town hall next, um, which is a little different than a panel discussion. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I'm sure there is. Anyways, the title is A Common Metric Even Possible. Let's invite our panelists up. We have Joan Fitzgerald, who's going to be our moderator. She's from Comscore, and she's the VP of Television and Cross Media Solutions. So welcome all our panelists. Great. Thank you. After our, my panelists get to the stage, hey, wasn't that a great presentation uh, just before mine? I'm not sure that we can, we can top that, because uh, I, for one, found it a little bit controversial. Uh, but I'm uh, being in the research industry, you know, I love looking at those leading indicators and seeing what those leading indicators mean for the future of media. Um, because in this case, you know, we ta he talked about the landline phones uh, kind of being something that young adults out of college uh, weren't subscribing to, newspapers dropping those subscriptions, and then being sort of court nevers for the um, cable and television. Uh, satellite companies, and the observation, too, that business models need to change. And business models mean both business models on the buyer and seller side. And I think that um, one thing I would, I would bring up is that, that uh, quote, I think it was uh, Mark Twain, you know, the news of my death has been greatly exaggerated. You know, I wouldn't count the, uh, the ESPNs of the world out. I wouldn't count the cable and satellite providers out because, like all of us, when consumer behavior changes, we change what we're doing. And uh, I am very confident that all of us in this room are experiencing <coughs> change in our everyday lives, um, just as the, uh, the, the, the cable networks, the, um, the cables and satellite systems are all uh, experiencing change. So what we're going to talk about today really has a lot to do with this change. And that is the, the uh, ability to measure video, whether it's consumed on a more traditional television set, whether it's consumed on a smartphone or a tablet, whether it's consumed on a PC device, or even a smart TV. We're going to talk about the measurement implications and the business implications of, uh, of an environment where consumers are able to access video on multiple platforms. But first, what I want to do is introduce my panel uh, and allow them to say a few minutes about the few things about themselves and their companies. Um, we have uh, Adam Gerber, Jeremy Lockhorn, and Dean McCormick. Uh, I'm Joan Fitzgerald. I'm the Vice President of Television and Cross Media Solutions at Comscore. Uh, I'm responsible for all of our cross media initiatives, um, including those which, um, which include uh, television. Comscore is one of the leading providers of digital uh, media uh, measurement in the, uh, in the world. And, um, uh, many of our services also include the traditional television environment. So, um, Jeremy, why don't you say a few words about yourself? Sure. Uh, Jeremy Lockhorn, VP of Emerging Media at Razorfish. Uh, so my charter basically is to scout the landscape uh, for kind of my flippant description as anything that's digital but not the web or an unusual variety of the web. Uh, so it's mostly mobile, uh, interactive television, connected television, uh, digital out of home, game consoles. Uh, and so forth. And of course, video uh, is a big part of that being distributed across all of those different platforms. Uh, and then my, my role is basically to function as an educator, an evangelist, and a consultant for uh, the rest of the agency and our clients directly. Okay, great. Um, what, uh, Dean? Uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, uh, my name is Dean McCormick. I'm from Black Arrow. Uh, Black Arrow provides the uh, technology and services to uh, the uh, cable operators uh, to enable uh, dynamic uh, and household and device level addressable uh, advertising um, on multi-platform multi television. Um, and we are focused now on doing that first on the video on demand platform. Uh, and we've that technology is deployed across uh, Comcast, all of the Comcast digital television households currently, uh, which is about 20 million households. Uh, and then as of this quarter, we're fully deployed with that technology across uh, Time Warner, which is another 10 million digital households, uh, with some other operators coming online this year. Uh, I run our advertising solutions uh, uh, unit, um, which is, uh, uh, which is um, 
uh, responsible for working with our operator customers to help monetize these new capabilities uh, across these platforms. Uh, and one of the uh, one of the things we're doing uh, in that um, area is providing uh, campaign, post-campaign, and in-flight uh, reporting and analytics um, for that uh, targeted advertising. And Adam. And uh, Adam Gerber, um, I'm the Vice President of Sales Development and Marketing at ABC. Um, my role uh, crosses all content uh, at ABC, whether it's distributed on the linear TV network, through alternative platforms like VOD, or uh, through our digital um, channels. And really what, what my team is focused on is thinking through how consumers are watching our shows and what the best proposition is that we can develop for our advertising partners. How do we go to market? How do we develop new opportunities? Um, and, and how do we uh, take advantage of the technology and the new measurement solutions that are in market um, to drive more value? Uh, and I come at this with a little bit of an eclectic background. So I'm, some of you know I've sat on the buy side for years. I was at a video platform company. Then I was at a digital analytics company. Um, so I've got pieces of everything kind of strewn throughout my brain. It'll be a little schizophrenic for me on this panel, but I'll try to keep it uh, sane. Because it's a town hall, not a panel. So that'll be, I think that'll work for us. Okay, so because it's a town hall, uh, the first thing I'm going to look for here is audience participation. So um, I'm gonna ask you an easy question, and then we're gonna um, isolate a few victims, and we're gonna ask the <laughs> victims a little bit harder questions. So, um, so don't be alarmed. You know, here's the easy question. Um, how many of you have heard of the New Fronts? Oh, that's the right answer, that's great. Okay, how many of you are in the brand, uh, the buy side, um, um, brand marketer in the audience. Okay, I see some potential victims over here. So what do we, we want to ask you today is, um, you know, is your company participating in the new fronts, right? And what are you trying to get out of it? You want to, anyone want to take a stab at that? So um, t t t say your name and maybe the brand family that you work on and what kind of, um, are you participating in the new fronts? And if you are, what's, um, uh, what are you looking to get out of it? Anybody? I see these two beautiful ladies in the yellow and the white shirt. They raised their hand. I saw them because their lights are kind of down on them. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm not familiar with new fronts. So You're I not, so, oh, sorry. Them. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's get somebody. Oh, I'm not familiar with these. She's, she's not. So the new fronts are just a level set. Uh, we've probably all heard of the upfronts, which is the time during the year that most of the traditional television advertising is is sold, and that period that happens in about May. The digital um, community uh, came up with the idea of having a new fronts, which is where digital advertising is uh, offered for sale on an upfront basis, um, and it's. It's digital video, it it's really goes beyond digital video into many forms of digital advertising, but it's a, an attempt to sell advertising in advance uh, on the digital platforms. The idea here is that um, some, in some cases, digital advertising uh, doesn't have uh, very much scarcity, right? There's, you can buy a, a trillion banner ads if you want to, but some forms of digital advertising are subject to scarcity. And that um, is primarily premium kinds of digital, digital video, where there aren't very many GRPs available. Um, and so the idea is to try to bundle all those uh, GRPs together and to sell them um, in advance. Okay, so is there a, a, someone in the room who is a brand marketer who's participating in the new front? Now they're all too shy. This is just going them. over like a total lead balloon, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, these are. Oh, hi, uh, Mark Risga from uh, Experian uh, Free Credit Score, Free Credit Report. Yeah, um, yeah we're we're involved in New Fronts. Um, basically, it's kind of a search mission. Um, you know, look what uh, opportunities exist out there across our marketing mix. Right, and so what are you seeking to to get out of the participation? Are you looking to get you know to increase 
your marketing spend in the digital side or just sort of observe what's happening? Well, um, that, that's one of our challenges. Like, um, you know, you're going to hear from many brand people. It's what's the right marketing mix with the right opportunity at right. the right time. I mean, it is the old, the old adage, the right message at the right time to the right audience. Um, you know, we've always been heavily, uh, you know, uh, in, in online, but we're also very heavy in cable. So right. it's looking for the right mix. Great. Thank you. All right. Let's get another brand uh, advertiser in the audience. Someone who's participating in the new fronts or thinking about it. Got to be one more. What about on the seller side? Do you, uh, if you're a seller who has inventory. I forgot to say, we're looking for really great deals. So I'm, a, I'm available <laughs> right. later, right the here. I'm, I'm the only guy here then. I'm, if I'm the only marketer, I'm looking for some yeah. deals. <laughs> Sellers, this is a great opportunity to introduce yourself, put a, put a name to the face. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Ken Magana from CBS Interactive, and, and we are actually going to be um, in the new front this year. April 30 is sure. ours. And uh, what, are, what are you seeking to achieve in the new fronts? What's success look like? You know, I, I think um, a lot of people know us for, uh, you know, our prime time content, our long form content. Um, I, I, I'm not so sure that people know us as well for uh, our short form content, some of the other uh, divisions within CBS Interactive, GameSpot, CNET, um, you know, CBSSports.com, you know, all of those other properties uh, have fantastic you know, short form content. And so we want to just make sure that, uh, that, that people are thinking about us for all of those platforms. Right. Do you see a big difference in interest between short form and long form content and valuations? What are, what are you seeing? I mean, the majority um, of our marketplace is, is longer form content. So uh, that's why we're looking at this as, a, as a, uh, a great platform to talk about what we're doing on the other side. Fantastic. That's yep. great. Uh, any other sellers in the audience that are participating? Oh, I see someone over there. Okay, good. Now we have sellers. There. Sellers are always speak up. <laughs> yeah, we, you can never shut us up. That's right. <laughs> I'm Jim O'Donnell from Hulu, along with my counterpart, John Blade from Hulu. And we are founding partners of the New Front, going all the way back to last year. So we're excited to do it again, <laughs> again this year. Uh -huh. And I think we look to get two things out of it. One is to introduce our slate of programming, our original programming, <clears throat> which is a big investment for us. And then also to really try and get advertisers to think more about moving that online video with their television dollars instead of the leftover dregs that sort of get bought in September and October. Let's, let's kind of do it all at once and a lot of it is about the, the measurement and the metrics that I know we'll talk about more today. Mm -hmm. What do you think is in it? I'm gonna ask you another question there. What do you think it is in it for the advertisers? Uh, in terms of bringing television and video together in their, in their buy? Well, you touched a little bit on it, and it's the scarcity. I think there's a notion that there isn't scarcity in digital, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And in premium video, there absolutely is. So we want to get that across. So it's great for an advertiser to lock in not only that scarce inventory, but also great deals, as our friend from Experian is looking for. Uh, volume gets you better pricing. And, and also research. I know we have a lot of researchers in the room, and locking in a, a research agenda early on about what do you want to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to pilot a lot of big programs for advertisers, and that's the time to talk about it is in the upfront. Mm -hmm. Do you find that, um, is there a common metric between TV and video, and uh, does it matter? We are big supporters of Nielsen's OCR product and the new XCR product, and we're finding that it's, it's getting a lot of traction, especially the XCR product, the cross-platform ratings, for those of you that don't know. And that allows advertisers to see the only, only both. Who's watching you on television, who's watching you online, and who's watching you in both. And we are big believers in ratings points as metrics and trying to find that common currency so that we can, we can do these kinds of deals together. Great. Okay, thanks so much. And uh, I think I saw one other seller hand go up. Uh, we'll take <coughs> one more, and then we'll move to our panel part of the town hall. I'm actually a buyer. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I'm uh, Michael Konowitz with uh, CMI. Um, we're a media agency focused in the healthcare space. Um, and I lead both our digital and our television planning and buying teams. And we, and we encourage our clients to attend both the, the new fronts and, and the upfronts. Um, 
we made a big push last year to get our clients involved. Uh, and we use the New Fronts as a platform to really legitimize online video. Mm -hmm. um, in the healthcare space, our clients are always the last to adapt to anything. Uh -huh. um, and we really wanted to uh, push the envelope with their thinking uh, and think about uh, digital video uh, and all things digital in, in bigger ways. So we use the New Fronts uh, and the Upfronts to a degree to um, just to show how important and how really equal the platforms are. Oh, okay, that's great. And uh, do you think as a result they'll be putting more money in digital? Is that what you think is an outcome? Or what does success look like out of the new fronts? Uh, success looks like two things. First is, is to allocate more dollars to digital. The other is to think about creative in different ways mm -hmm. uh, and to ramp up investment in digital creative, whether it's long form video or, or whatever. Yeah, that's terrific. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, we're going to turn it over our, to our panelists now, and we're kind of going to go through some of that, some of that territory and new territory, which is, you know, what are you, um, Jeremy from Razorfish? What are you, your clients, looking to get out of the new fronts? And is Razorfish participating? Uh, we are, yeah, um, and uh, and we have been. Uh, you know, uh, last year was the first official year of the, the sort of mm -hmm. new model of new fronts, but the new fronts coming out of Digitas, one of our sister agencies, have been going on for, um, for you know, I don't know, three, four, five years. Uh, and we've been participants uh, all the way back uh, from, from almost the very beginning. Um, and yeah, you know, I think what it's about is getting, raising the, the, the visibility of online video, the quality of the content that's out there, both sort of repurposed programming and, and new programming. Uh, and you know, finding the places where uh, we see alignment with our brands, and just securing uh, the inventory from uh, you know to the point that was made from a scarcity perspective, it does exist around some of this premium web original programming. Uh, and I think again, it's, it's just about raising the visibility and finding the opportunities that align with the brand. Mm -hmm. Would have talked a little bit more about original programming. Um, there's repurposed programming, as you mentioned, and also original programming. How are you um, you conveying those opportunities to your clients, and how is the, like the uh, awareness of original <coughs> programming building? You know, and I mean separating original programming from, you know, like user-generated content. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think there's kind of, there's different ways to think about it, right? Like, you know, some brands will want to be, they want to associate with a piece of content regardless of where it's going to be, right? And in that case, uh, you know, they're looking at taking the repurposed stuff from the, what, what they're already doing on TV and just, you know, following the eyeballs and, and making sure that they're surrounding all consumers who are viewing that piece of content. Uh, so I think, you know, that's one way that we talk about sort of the repurposed side. And then on the original programming side, you know, um, it was said this morning that, you know, Wired called out Machinima uh, as the future of TV. And, and, you know, if you look at, and not just to focus in on those guys, but if you look at the quality of the programming that, that, that's, that's hitting the web these days, uh, it just continues to build and build and build and get better and better, you know, every year, every season. Uh, and, and, you know, it's getting to the point uh, now where I, I think, you know, advertisers can no longer ignore that. Uh, and it was easy you know, years ago to, to, to dismiss online video as user generated and, and dogs on skateboards and that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, that's just, it's not, that's not what it's all about anymore. Mm -hmm. Great. And I'm going to just uh, take Dean, in a, ask you a question in a minute, but move to uh, Adam from the seller side. Did I sit in the wrong order or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go, because I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you a harder question. So that's it's about from the seller's perspective yeah. and mm -hmm. the new fronts. I, I mean, look, I, I think the new fronts are, uh, are terrific in that they draw attention to the online video space. Um, you know, at ABC, we're fortunate enough to be in a position where uh, every spring we announce our fall slate during the upfronts. Uh, and um, that is when we talk to marketers and we talk to the marketplace about our content. Uh, it's not about anymore being a TV show that's launching uh, on linear television. We talk about our complete uh, content offering, whether that's on television, through on-demand services, or online, uh, when we announce the fall slate. So we're incredibly excited about being able to do that um, in, in less than a month's time now. Um, I think what you're seeing happen in the marketplace, whether you call it a new front or an upfront, it's really just a de device to talk to the marketplace about what's coming in terms of your content offering, whether you're a digital company or, or a traditional media company or a hybrid. 
um, and to get those opportunities in front of marketers in time for them to allocate budget and plan and execute um, against what's coming in the marketplace three, six, 12 months uh, down the road. At the end of the day, and I, I think what's important for people to understand, the concept of upfronts and newfronts is about predictability. Uh, as dynamic and as real time as the media marketplace has become with online digital, at the end of the day, the only way the economics of our business work is if there's predictability that the writers and the producers and the actors and the editors and everyone involved in the content food chain can manage against. Um, you know, our industry cannot just happen out of the blue. Uh, parts of it will in the news space um, where events drive coverage and video, but for scripted and entertainment-based programming, there has to be a, a planned and well thought out um, component of how the ecosystem evolves. So I think the new fronts, the upfronts, whatever you call them, they're about content companies talking to the marketplace about what, ha what they have coming, and I think that's great. Yep, yeah, that's terrific. So Dean, you're <coughs> very involved in um, infrastructure for cable MSOs, right? And, um, and especially in offering addressable advertising to consumers, really new forms of traditional TV advertising. So how do you see that playing in to the new fronts or the upfronts? You know, sometimes we look at that kind of addressable advertising capability as more akin to you know, to digital video where it isn't time bound and other times we look at it as just another form of TV. How do you see that fitting in? Right, well, it's, it's interesting. So there's, you know, the, uh, the, the level of targeting for audiences that has been associated with digital and online for, you know, several years. Uh, we see now crossing over to television with what we're doing um, and then vice versa with, um, Comscore and Nielsen all focusing on um, a GRP type measurement of television in the IP and online space. But so we see that um, the, the measurement and analytics crossing over from digital onto television with what we're doing. Uh, we provide um, reporting that's based on census level, exact second by second measurement of commercial viewing. Uh, and so the the wealth of data there is you know, enormous. And so we have to figure out with, as, as Adam said, with the whole ecosystem really, uh, what do agencies and advertisers want to see in terms of metrics? Uh, what do operators want to provide when they're selling their piece of the inventory? What will programmers provide? Uh, and so we're, we're engaged with, um, we work closely with, for instance, with um, uh, Comcast Media 360, which is Comcast National Advertising Sales Arm. So then we're having those conversations with agencies now with them uh, and figuring this out. So um, there's uh, uh, you know, lots of opportunity there um, and lots of potential metrics. Um, and um, so we have to figure out how to value it, how to value this inventory and, and what metrics need to be looked at to value it. Is it as simple as um, just impressions and gross rating points? Or is metrics more complicated than that when you're putting together multiple platforms? So we'll start with um, the chairman. Um, it, well, you know, I mean, it, it, I think we in the digital space have been, have been battling against uh, a digital GRP for what feels like years. And actually, it doesn't just feel like years. It has been years. It has been years. Um, and it, but I, I, I think that, you know, we're, we, we're starting to come around to this idea that we need a common vocabulary uh, across these channels. Um, what we need to do, though, is, is separate the, the sort of currency side versus the value, valuation side of it, right? Like, we can talk in impressions or we can talk in GRPs, whatever it is. We have to also figure out how are we, what, how are we ascribing value to uh, an impression, whether you're calling it a rating point or... Uh, an impression um, on each one of those channels, right? So let's just assume for a moment that everybody gets on board and we go down this path of, of a GRP as the common metric for premium video across all of those channels. Am I, as a buyer or an advertiser, going to place the same value on a TV impression uh, as I am on, you know, a, a digital impression? Probably not. The GRP doesn't, doesn't capitalize on the, uh, doesn't factor in the engagement uh, factor. Um, the, the sort of broader context of 
how is the consumer viewing this? And then that doesn't even get into the, the other complications around like, is he on a bus, on a crowded bus, and he's watching a, a sports <coughs> clip or whatever, and you know, how do I place value on that versus you know, a much more sort of lean forward, um, or lean forward is not the right, it's not the right thing right there, but uh, much more of a, uh, uh, a um, he's, he's able to focus more uh, on the channel, right? right. Um, so I think the currency piece, the impression and GRP thing is only one piece of the puzzle, and we've got to figure out how do we, how do we address the impact piece of it. We've got 60, 70 years of econometric modeling that tells us in the TV space if we buy XGRPs, it's going to do Y in terms of sales, and we just don't have that yet in digital. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. And just for those of us in the audience who aren't in the metrics or research space, um, we all know what impressions are, you know, which is a count of the number of exposures to your advertising. But not everyone may know what a GRP is. A gross rating point is what that uh, stands for, is very simply those impressions divided by the population. And it's the number that the advertising, the buyer and seller community use to make transactions uh, on the, uh, on, in the traditional television space. So if you take your impressions and you divide them by your population and you come up with a number, let's say 300, right? 300 roughly means um, you reached 100% of your target three times. That's where the 300. It could mean that you, re you reached 50% of your target six times, but it's kind of a, a, a measure of um, the volume of television advertising that you've placed in the marketplace. And, uh, and it's a very, very unique <coughs> metric. Um, in the digital space, the digital community has, at times, really fought against using a GRP measure uh, in the marketplace, even though you know, uh, digital has relied on impressions for a long time. And I, I think that Jeremy really goes to the heart of the issue that we're here to discuss today, which is um, valuations and how they compare. And we have a uh, comment from the audience. Yeah, um, Hank Cohen, KSL Media. Uh, my comment comes back to what uh, you were just stating about what's the effectiveness of the impression. So if we go back 15, 18, 20 years, okay, this has been, you know, the chicken of the egg. This has been a, a story for forever. Is a, is a print impression as great as a TV impression? Is an outdoor impression as great as that? So agencies have been putting imperative factors, as we call them, on different media type, depending upon what the marketing objectives are of the clients. I, it's, it's great that it's coming to light in this discussion, but it's been dealt with for years. So. You know, as, a, as an agency person, what we're dealing with is how do we quantify a client's investment into the media? That's always been, since its inception, digital, judged on a cost per acquisition or a cost per lead. And, and the client's grown up that way, right? And now you're saying shift the dollars that you have here to a three-screen environment move it over here, they go, that's great. Do you want me to move $8 million over here? How are you going to measure it? And I think that's kind of the, the discussion I was hoping to hear, because um, that's what the pebble in my shoe is, you know, in dealing with a lot of different clients who have looked at this as a customer acquisition based uh, model. You're, and you're I, more it, concerned with the shift from uh, a, a performance model, whether it's no, cost not per click a or cost per I'm not, what I'm, what I'm looking for is what I think a lot of us are faced with, which is how do I measure the success of this? Okay, clients have had, advertisers have a, a lot of double standard here. You know, they throw the, on the big screen, they throw the GRP up and they want to know how effective that was, right? right? right. In, in digital, they, they, they knew. Now there's a transformation. Okay, and so when you're going to senior management at a, at a client and you're dealing with people who are going there and they're making that change, we have to give them the ammunition. We have yep. to come to group, uh, the decision as a group so we have an, a position on this that's more hardcore. And that's kind of what I was hoping the discussion would lead to. Yep. One, ad one additional question, if I could, then I'll move up, is from a, from a seller side. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, run, I run a company and I'm wondering how Structurally, okay, if you're in a digital organization, okay, but the world is, uh, is, is procurement now. So, what do I have? My national broadcast department, 
or do I have a digital department? Or how is the, up, the new fronts going to work in that regard to a lot of agencies around when who's taking the lead here? Okay, You're positioning yourself as content sold the way you've sold it since, since the beginning. Okay, Now we have a new front that decided to use the same process of selling, which was great for awareness, but the timing of it and why it has to be you know, in the antiquated way in which it was done, if we're going to be the new fronts, then maybe we should take a position to say, you know, advertisers in the upfront and the way that syncs with fiscal budgets is very antiquated. So I'm just, I would love to hear an answer to that question too. Okay, well I think we've got two really meaty questions there to tackle and I'm going to take a stab at the first question and then we're going to turn it over to the group for some of that first. You know, one of the questions that we've talked about as a panel is this idea of, of effectiveness in digital advertising. And um, I think one of the challenges is that your volume of advertising is so much lower in the digital space, just overall, that it's very difficult for econometric modeling, you know, marketing mix analytics, to detect the impact of digital video um, when you're well, uh, advertising campaigns. You know, you think about your TV advertising campaign. It's typical for your TV advertising campaign to reach 80% of your target audience. And in fact, if you are a, uh, an advertising agency, and you haven't reached 85% of your target audience, you've pretty much failed in most cases. Well, now you've got some of the big advertisers out there, you know, taking a step back. They started investing in digital on a cost per acquisition basis. They found that that was very successful. They've moved a lot of their dollars over into the digital um, space. And they're finding that those marketing mix analytics are not really working for them in that space. And so what we've done as an industry is we've really embraced new techniques to measure impact. Some of them are better than others. Uh, one of the, uh, the products that Comscore has is an ad effectiveness suite where we, um, we uh, after a consumer is exposed to a digital advertising, they're offered a short survey. And we, um, we offer that survey to those who are exposed and not exposed, you know, in order to sort of dissect the impact of digital video. And I think we are going to be doing a lot more of that in the future in order to understand the different valuations between traditional TV and digital marketing, even where your digital marketing campaign may be a two, you know, some digital advertising campaigns, they might reach 5% of the target audience or 20% of the target audience, and that's a successful campaign. You know, we're really, we're really going after different things here. I'd like my panel to comment on that in terms of the impact of digital advertising compared to, uh, to traditional TV and how we measure it. You want to well, try that? Uh, well, certainly the, I mean, what you just mentioned there, the smaller, smaller universes, reaching smaller universes can, will be, you know, uh, deemed a success in this sort of new world. Uh, I mean, uh, reach is uh, really one of those common metrics, I think, that um, to the gentleman's question of, you know, how do they look at success if it's, uh, you know, it's hard, if you look more, more and more at audiences um, that are available on traditional TV, that are available on these other platforms, and how difficult or easy it is to reach them, um, and if you can reach them uh, on some of these other platforms, uh, these, you know, uh, smaller audiences um, uh, are, you know, they, they'll, they'll generate very small ratings numbers, so when you compare it to the traditional sort of GRP metric on television, it will look like something that's not successful when in fact, you know, you've reached consumers that are almost impossible to reach potentially on the traditional TV platform. So we have to, that has to be figured out in this sort of new value equation. So we've got 11 minutes left, and I feel like we haven't covered the topic. Um, so let me try to, uh, <laughs> let me try to, I'm going to spit out everything I've been thinking for the last 30 minutes, and, uh, and we'll have one minute left. We can, compan <laughs> we, we can, uh, we can, you know, continue at the bar this evening, debating <laughs> metrics. Look, I think to Hank's question, um, you know, I, for those of you who have seen me speak before, I've been saying this for 10 years, uh, we are debating a red herring. This notion of do we need metrics, new metrics, is kind of almost a joke at this point. Um, 
for those of you who started on the agency side, I started in the business before the internet existed. I was comparing out of home impressions to print impressions, to radio impressions, we were looking at 30 second copy, 60 second copy. There were ways to evaluate on a metrics basis impressions and GRPs cross platform. This issue has been dealt with, researchers know how to do it, and we shouldn't be debating it. The transactional unit in this business is impressions. That's what content companies sell, that's what advertisers buy, there's a transparent marketplace. The question is, how does each side value those impressions based on the context of the content, the environment, the, uh, you know, the, the time spent with the particular vehicle, the attention, the ad impact, whatever metric you want to look at, buyers and sellers can use those to value media. Okay? And we may choose as buyers and sellers to focus on different things. And just like in the stock market, every company trades shares of stock. Every share of stock is valued differently in the marketplace by buyers and sellers, depending on whether they're looking at margins or cash flow or whatever metric they want to value the company on. Same thing in media. You need a transparent marketplace where a transactional unit is traded, and whoever is buying and selling has to figure out what value they're going to place on those impressions. So what do we have to debate? We have to debate whether you know, a 30-second ad in a long-form video experience on an iPad or on a computer screen has the same value as a 30-second ad on a 50-inch plasma in the living room. And there's quite a bit of data already out in the marketplace, fielded by us, fielded by CBS, fielded by other networks, fielded by the IAB, fielded by the 4As and the ANA, all of which proves that consumer exposure in digital environments, especially with long-form content, is just as engaging, if not more engaging, than those experiences in traditional linear TV. So you already start to have your answer. Now, what's, what's important to look at? We saw a lot of facts and figures thrown up this morning about the billions of impressions that different short form videos are doing. Well, that's great, but I gotta believe that a lot of those billion and a half Gangnam style video impressions were watched by the same person hundreds of times. There's a, there's a component of unduplicated reach that has to be evaluated um, when you look at content experiences and the value of media. And just because something does a billion and a half impressions on YouTube doesn't mean that it has the same value as content as a show that's reaching 20 or 30 million people on a weekly basis um, through television and online properties. So XCR and unduplicated single source measurement tools are going to be critical in us understanding what the value of content is cross-platform. There's seven minutes left. I use three and a half. I'm going to shut up. Well so you guys each that use well three, and, uh, <laughs> and we'll go from there. Those were you, you just, you, very you, worthwhile uh, comments. Just one, uh, one more thing to consider. You know, w w as our, uh, the, the person in the audience said, we have always dealt with these kinds of uh, issues, you know, whether we're buying magazines or TVs. I think the big difference here is this word that was so overused <coughs> in the 90s, you know, this idea of convergence. You know, people anticipated that convergence would eventually happen, and I think that's what we're happen is uh, happening right now, where you have more screens, potentially new screens replacing the old screens. And that's why, uh, as a media community, you know, it's even more important for us to get this valuation right between digital advertising and television advertising than, than perhaps it ever was uh, before with other media which could be bought and sold on a standalone basis. Um, you know, unlike TV and video, where we really are feeling this pressure to pull them together, to get to an unduplicated reach number, to get to demographics, to really make them more comparable uh, in the marketplace. And Jeremy, what, what do you, what well, do you think I was just going to second everything that Adam said. You, I mean, you, uh, you basically more eloquently articulated what I was trying to say earlier, I think, in the panel. Um, yeah, you know, it, it really is just how do we how do we continue to build, uh, you know, the case studies, the research, the, you know, and it's funny, you mentioned it, like, we take those things to the clients and, and you know, sometimes it's like, yes, go. Other times it's, well, let's poke holes in that, right? And I think we've just got to get to the point where we have as much confidence in those kinds of things as we do in the years and years and years of econometric modeling that have gone on to prove what a GRP does in those other channels, right? We just, we have to work together as an industry to get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you expecting this kind of research to be brought to the table at the New Fronts this year? 
Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. I would like to see it be a part of every deal that we do. Mm -hmm. right. And I, th I think one of the big mistakes we're all making is that just because technology changes doesn't mean that the basics of marketing and media changes. At the end of the day, you know, if you're P&G or you're Coke or you're Amex or you're whoever you are, you need to reach a lot of people with your message. You have to introduce them to your products. You got to get them to trial it. You got to get them to buy it again, okay? And whether or not people are watching through digital platforms or television, in mass or on an individual on-demand basis, at the end of the day, marketers need to figure out how to reach a lot of people, deliver their message, get consumers to try the product, and buy it again. So the concepts of reach, the concepts of frequency, the concepts of how you optimize that across platform efficiently from a cost perspective, those are all the things we've been doing for 60 years, planning and buying television. Doesn't change. Things that change are we've got a wider array of platforms that we have to figure that out across. We need better measurement tools to be able to do it because there's a wider array of devices. But at the end of the day, the principles of marketing don't change. They're the same. That's, that's the challenge for all of us. Wait, yeah, wait. I'm just, you know, you, you've made a good point. You're hoping that that comes in the, in, in the new fronts. Uh, you know, you hope that, that well, it's, it's not going to come if we don't do something about it. You know, it's, right. it's not going to just appear. Yeah. And, and then everybody's got a different methodology or way of thinking. There's got to be, because it's just hurting us at this right. point. So That's how exactly. do we get there? The Agreed. Yeah. We, need to, we need to, like I said, we need to work together as an industry and collaborate to get there. But I, I think you're seeing that collaboration already happen. Uh, the, the 4As, the ANA, the IAB uh, came together and created a 3MS initiative, making measurement make sense. And one of the first things they did was put together five principles, one of which, principle number one, is that the digital advertisement has to be seen or have the opportunity to be seen by the consumer. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, a lot of digital advertising, well, we're all in the digital space, so this is something you will believe, can't even be seen, right? The advertising may be below the fold. The ad may not have it rendered, but before the consumer turned to another web page. The ad may not be in a brand-friendly environment. There is many reasons that that impression may not be a valid uh, impression. And imagine what that does to your marketing mix models. If 40% of the impressions that you delivered actually weren't seen by the consumer, that really um, causes your effectiveness studies to go haywire because it looks like impact um, of digital advertising is flat for your brand rather than something else where it really may be very impactful. Uh, so that is one of the things that Comscore has really um, taken on is making sure that all of the impressions that we measure are validated. Uh, we have a validated campaign essentials uh, in order to, to make sure that the marketers are getting uh, what they paid for. And there are several other principles there. So I think that we've only seen the start of, um, of these kinds of industry-wide initiatives to make sure we have high quality, transparent uh, measurement uh, in the digital space. I, I think it's really important just to note on the concept of viewability. I want to make sure the room understands. <laughs> That's from a display media perspective that viewability standards have been set. Uh, the concept of viewability in the video space, which is what this room is talking about, is a completely different discussion. Um, and no standards have been set by the 3MS group in that area. And no products that are out in market claiming that they are measuring viewability for video are valid offerings from the industry perspective. There is no standard that's been set and agreed to by the industry around video viewability. So I think it's really dangerous to talk about the concept of viewability from the display world and start applying it to the video space. The reality is people who watch video tend to complete video, especially in high quality video environments. And I'm not going to just talk about ABC here. I'm going to point to Ken and say CBS. <laughs> I'm going to point to my brothers and sisters from ESPN. And, and, all the, and Hulu and others, any of those environments, you see completion rates of 90 plus percent. Um, so the issue of viewability in the 
high quality premium tier of online video. It's a very different animal than display, where you've got websites and ad networks doing things that aren't necessarily ideal. Yeah, that's, that's very true, but I do think this is the right place to discuss it. I don't think it's a separate discussion. It, it's the right place, but it's taking, it's yeah, taking, technically it's different. taking too yeah. long, and you, you're, we're here trying to transfer, do a transference of dollars into video content, and we're not talking about how we can make it accountable. Yep. And, and you know, I, I think that the committee is great, but you could have death by committee. Yeah. Just we got to move things along. I think that committee has accomplished more than I would have expected in a short yeah, period of time, it. to give them a little credit. Um, so I want to turn it uh, to our final question over to the panelists. And uh, that is, if we're here a year from now, uh, what would be the, the, the thing that happened that really transitioned the industry uh, within the last year that makes our lives a lot better, uh, better next year? Uh, I think it's us in this room over cocktails tonight, figuring <laughs> out uh, you know, how, we, how we build the case uh, for accountability uh, and valuation of video impressions across different channels. Yeah, I guess um, uh, it could be several things, but one, one big thing would be, an, uh, as Adam mentioned, un, uh, a measure of unduplicated reach uh, or reach across platforms, looking at specific audiences and, and, uh, you know, how, they can be, and how they're being reached on different devices. Uh, and uh, I think that would be a huge leap forward that doesn't get you to, it's not getting into purchasing data, it's not solve us, solving the attribution it, uh, issue, but it's showing how uh, you know how audiences are being reached would be a huge leap forward. So I'm I'm going to ladder off both of these two guys and and kind of focus on the notion of being able to look at all video from a measurement perspective. So today, 40% of ABC's digital video viewership happens in apps, and neither Comscore or Nielsen can measure those audiences. Um, as a result of that, we can't get single source, a cross view from a single source um, baseline of unduplicated audience. I think the most critical thing for this industry, given the rapid rates of acceptance of, of new devices and new forms of viewership, is to get a base measurement tool in place that allows us to look at reach and unduplicated audience. Nielsen talks a lot about three components of measurement, reach, relevance, and response or, or results. And media companies can deliver reach. Um, relevance has to do with a marketer's product and offering and their messaging and creative strategy. And results is a combination of the two. Did I reach a large enough audience with the right message and product to drive sales results? We gotta focus on that first bucket. That's where it all starts. So let's get a measurement solution in place that can measure app video, that can measure tablet and phone, and that allows us to look at it cross-platform with television, on-demand, uh, through video on-demand services on cable, so we understand what the heck people are watching and when and where. Very good. Okay, thank you very much to my panel, and also thank you to the audience. Joe, I'd like to, I'd like to interject one thing. So in leading up to the, the summit, to our roundtable, to all of 2013, we had conversations with hundreds of brand marketers and agencies and, and media companies. And this is by far the number one transactional issue that's holding up, uh, holding up the industry. So what I encourage you is not just within this session and the confines of, but across the rest of uh, the, the re remainder of this summit, please have these conversations. Uh, Adam has now been on, on two of these different uh, uh, discussions, our New York roundtable here, Michael Hayes, tons of Everyone in attendance here, please continue this conversation, if nothing else, because this is really the source of, what, of, of what's holding up the integration of this into one video marketplace. Thank you. We did neither of us use a vessel. Well, great. Well, thank you to our panelists.